again it's Cliff here from Down Under carrying on this video series work holding I'm going to go into vices amongst other things in this video large vices and very small vices and uh, going into the Hallmark probe the ITTP probe production at times and various other side issues alrighty cheers if you're planning to buy a vice or an, an additional vice, um, think carefully about the uh, design of it. You, you really want one that's got a flush uh, machined edges or sides so that you can lay the vice on its side and not just on its back. It's much more versatile if you do that. And also, you don't need to be constrained by the position of the T-slot clamping bolts you don't need to align them with the T-slots in your machine. If you make up special vice clamps, let's have a look at that. So the design of these is optimum where you've got clearance underneath, except for at the very back, and the bolt is as close to the vice as possible. That gives you a much better geometry, much better mechanical advantage, so that the clamping force is close to the vise and there's less clamping force on the heel of the clamp at the back there. This type of vise can really only be clamped on the table on its back and that's a very limited application. A vise that can be put on its side is much more useful. You can use your clamping kit not just for clamping your work but also for clamping your vise and you can put some parallels underneath and um, hold the, the part in a more useful orientation um, so that you've got the alignment and positioning that is more accurate or more secure or better suits the shape of your part. While we're on work holding very small parts, it's a good idea to have very small tools for holding very small parts. Here's a little vise, a little hardened ground vise I made years ago and a little v-block and a little uh, adjustable stop or depth measuring setting transferring gauge all really useful tools for very small scale work at the moment i'm assembling up some of the hallmark probes the little stylus assemblies and i can grip with the aluminium jaws the little four millimeter steel ball and prepare it for assembly. You can take the stem out of there, get a little toothpick that I have hammered on the end to produce bristles and then scour out the inside of that spark eroded hole to remove any residual oil or carbon that might be in there. And the big advantage of this is that I've got a, a block of wood in the vise and it's quite high at chest height um, so that I'm not bending down to a low vise because I'm working with magnification binoculars and I can do this very small scale work more easily having a little mobile portable vise to hold the part and move it to different stations. So now I can blow that off with compressed air without losing the little ball. So everything's at a convenient height. I know this sounds pretty obvious, but sometimes it takes a while before the obvious actually really sinks in. And I can clean the little stem in case there's any residual oil on there with solvent. Tissues are really handy for this type of work. And then with another little toothpick which is ground down to a smaller diameter, I can put half a drop of uh, super Loctite retaining compound, or oh, that was a bit much, that's the uh, Loctite 638. And I can put it inside the hole so that I know that it's getting fully applied to the assembly joint dispense it into the hole. Now if I put the little stem in there, 
Now this is all easier because I've got a little vise. Screw it in. Now I get a tissue. Press it in the rest of the way and wipe off the excess Loctite. I now put that into a little clamping fixture to hold the assembly until the Loctite sets off. But a little vice like this is also handy for machining. You know, without the aluminium jaws perhaps you could hold a small part, set it up off the milling machine, then put it into a vise on a parallel, it might be on an angle. Uh, it's really convenient for holding little parts and you can work at them at sort of eyeball level and transfer them into a bigger vise. So these hardened alloy tool steel stems go through a cylindrical grinding process and after that Cylindrically ground to fit these hard steel bearing balls that have been spark eroded. Through the assembly process that I've just outlined, into the holding fixture held under tension during setting, and then ready for the next stage of assembly. If you look at a Hamer tip, it's got a fragile self-sacrificing tip on the stylus and it looks like it's just cemented on with a little cup shaped flange and that's adequate because it's self-sacrificing and you have that ceramic section which will break away on impact but with the Hallmark Impact Tolerant Touch Probe it's designed to be stiff and strong and so we've got a spark eroded hole deep into the ball and a high tensile stylus spigot goes deep inside there and made out of hardened H13 steel so that is really bulletproof it can stand severe impact <laughs> So the balls are all conveniently at a 4mm pitch which makes it easy to set the position of the electrode with the DRO. This method of batch production using little wooden blocks and trays of parts that you move from machine process to machine process takes me right back to 1989 when I was travelling in Scotland and went to Jedburgh to the LS Starrett factory and they gave me a tour around the factory um, and I saw them uh, machining up uh, micrometer parts and little racks of uh, wooden boxes and trays being moved from machine to machine um, and uh, assembled and uh, it absolutely fascinated me and it really stuck in my mind the processes they were using for sort of small scale batch production and um, at the end of the tour they must have noted my enthusiasm and perhaps because I was also a toolmaker and they took me into a little side room where they, where they had kept marred seconds products that were just below spec and they probably kept them aside just to use as gifts and I, I really appreciated them uh, giving me a little selection of these tools. Oh and a couple more tips relating to vices. So if you engrave on your vise the height from this surface to the base surface where a parallel sits on each of your vices, 41.3 and in this case 41.5. Oh, I also put on it the maximum opening, 152, 185. So when you've got that height, for example, and you know you want to optimize the depth of engagement of your part, and you you what you know that you can hold your part, let's say 15 millimeters into the vise, um, and still have free machining above it, then you just subtract that from your 41.5. Come over to your parallels, 
and if you write down the height of all the parallels, you can quickly do the mental maths or a calculator if you're having a bad hair day and select the perfect parallel to give you the perfect depth of engagement in your vise and that saves a lot of time. Most of you will be familiar with these little uh, toolmakers vices, hardened and ground. I think they're mainly made in China now, really good value, only one or two hundred US dollars, very accurate and a very good design of uh, jaw clamping with a screw going through there at an angle into a selected dowel which is threaded out and that pulls the part very firmly in position and holds the moving jaw down flat on the sliding uh, vice surface which is a, a very effective little vice um, and if you don't have one of those and you're doing small work could be a very useful addition to your tools. I made a, a smaller version of that years ago which has got the conventional screw and this is uh, a, a little bit quicker to operate because you can just wind it in and out um, so it's a little bit more convenient but on the downside it's uh, not quite it doesn't uh, locate the moving jaw quite as accurately because it's not pulling it down onto this fixed sliding surface um, although this is a reasonably accurate one with a long length of engagement but in principle this design with the screw coming down pulling the floating jaw down onto that flat surface and up against the part is a, a superior design just takes a little bit longer to use these are 80 millimeters or just over three inch small chucks made in china are really handy if you don't have one of these um, they're really cheap they're you know uh, i think from memory around about 100 us dollars and um, with hardened jaws and you can hold small parts and they're very very useful um, that's about as small as they go at that low price but very very useful little chuck you can buy even smaller chucks and you can make up a, this this is a little chuck i made up just out of a bit of uh, tool steel hardened it up just to take the er small er collets and you can uh, mount that in a lathe chuck or in a vise um, another very useful little small part holding tool what we tend to forget about small tools and small chucks is that we get so much more clearance here's a little 100 millimeter three jaw chuck and while your big six inch or eight inch three jaw chuck may well hold a small part it doesn't have the clearance it doesn't have the fine small diameter jaws the small diameter jaws in this chuck has more clearance than an ER collet system probably more clearance than a 5C collet system because of this very small diameter and it allows you to in this case cylindrically grind but it could be a lathe you just get a lot of clearance and for the small cost of these chucks and the hassle of making up some back plates um, we uh, should seriously consider this as a good small part work holding option small three jaw chucks another big advantage of small three jaw chucks I'll just touch on very briefly because I know I've mentioned it in my other videos um, is that the jaws pull in at right angles to the part so they don't pull the part lengthways so it's very good for positioning lengthways in the axial position you can get your part locked up very easily also you can dial them in very concentric by having them floating on the flange at the back with cap screws or uh, hexagon bolts or cap screws coming through from the front I've discussed this many times but I just wanted to include it in here in the work holding videos covering chucks that a three jaw can be adjustable to highly concentric and it locks on the part without moving it lengthwise of course there's some situations where the collet is the best way to hold a part it grips on the full diameter so if you have a part that's very short of length and small in diameter or fragile it may well be best clamped up in a collet um, but if your part is not short of length and uh, is not fragile then you can take advantage 
of a three jaw chuck. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Cheers. Yeah.